Hello everybody and welcome back to the War of Three Oceans. I'm Count Christo. Let's do this thing. We are barreling towards the 36, two 36 BBs that we commissioned oh so long ago. Being ready for active service so that we can put them to use in the South China Sea. We uh, are just working on getting organized in terms of which fleets are going to have which ships. So I think the main force is going to get these extra screens, these new screens that we've actually designed and built ourselves with the, the very finest of modules. Um, in terms of what's currently in them, do we want to take out their bad destroyers? Larger fleets do get positioning penalties um, versus smaller fleets. So maybe we want to take out some of the old destroyers now that it has these better ones. I'm not sure, really, what we should be doing on that front. Banging out new dockyards like nobody's business. And in fact, we have nowhere to put them right now. Um, some more subs. I feel like we're going to lose subs at quite a rate. So we should probably uh, do that. And more... I'd love more um, decent cruiser screening forces. That seems pressing to me. Um, in terms of the scout forces, the 36 scouts are the ones I wish I could be using in like all of these. How many scouts do I have? I don't think I split those out yet. I think I only have four of those, looks like. Which is not the best. But, uh, you know, we, we will work with what we've got. Um, so I'll split those off. I guess we should have... How many scout forces should be operating in the South China Sea? I don't really know. But let, let's build the Dream Team scout force. Do we have any scouts in these guys? No, how about in here somewhere? Uh, no, those are all, all named ones. So I guess all ships we started with. The next campaign we do in Man the Guns is definitely going to be as someone where we have much more of an opportunity to, to learn the Navy from the beginning. So we'll play as someone like... Um, I think Greece might be a good one to play as, or uh, maybe maybe Germany, but I've played Germany so many times, I think Greece is probably a good option. Because um, if you build your navy almost from scratch, I really feel like we'll be uh, more well acquainted <laughs> with our naval force, basically. Okay, um, I need to keep people exercising because we're very low on naval XP. Um, so, from... For the for the best scouting force. Oh, this is another another raid submarine that needs needs a place to live. Um Best Scouting Force, obviously. These scouts are gonna be great, because these are the ones with um radar and things. So they've got great surface detection, great sub detection. Uh and then we should put them together with some of the uh whoops, didn't mean to change that. What was this originally? I think it was just that meaning like main fleet and then this is the one we're using for scouting okay so now we need a cruiser what cruiser is best placed for our scouting purposes let's show outdated equipment we're obviously not going to have these threes yet um the 36 spotters did we ever build any of these i don't remember if we actually got any 36 spotters completed uh, let me look. I'm not seeing any here. What are, what are these? How are these ones in terms of surface detection? 20. That's pretty good. What class are you? An Okinoshima class. Okay, let's see what the Okinoshima class has going for it. Uh, I don't actually see it in the list. Well, that's not helpful. Uh, oh, is it because that's a heavy cruiser? No. Maybe it's because it's it's a direct prequel to one of these ones. But 20 surface detection is pretty good. I must have built one, some of those 36 scout class ones, surely. You really would have thought so, wouldn't you? Where are they? I guess we didn't. I mean, uh, they're not showing up. So, I guess... Well, here, we could see it in the list. Did maybe, no, you're right, I didn't build them. I was just building the, the screens. I just had the scout destroyers, that's right. We only got four scout destroyers done. Wow, that's not that's not very good. <laughs> Do we have any more? No, it's going to be April before we have another scout, a 36 scout done. Should I even be building 36 scout 
V1s. Oh no, that's an upgraded. We we did a direct upgrade on the 36 Scout destroyers, didn't we? Excuse me. There we go. Uh, yeah, the 36 Scout destroyers were a direct upgrade. Okay, understood, understood. Uh, the sweepers are we going to keep with early destroyers? By the way, I don't really see any reason to uh, to make them better. And I didn't accidentally put them in here. No. Um, one last check in here because I just can't believe it. No, they really aren't there. Okay, so in here, however, we do have some heavy cruisers. And I kind of want to send some heavy cruisers because they're quite fast. How fast are the these guys? See, these are the stupid fast. These 36 scouts can go 42 knots, which is just really good. So do I really want to throw in a heavy cruiser that's only making 33.3 knots? That doesn't seem perfect, does it? But, you know, they're bringing the... Uh, the much better heavy to bring a little bit of heavy attack and that torpedo attack is lovely so let's take two heavy cruisers and then have the, the light cruisers have got to be faster no because these are old old light cruisers so we're not going to bring those let's bring two oh, i'd rather have a another well they're the same speed okay these two heavy cruisers oh there we go we have two of the same class there these two heavy cruisers We'll combine with the the scout class destroyers. And then we'll just throw in some other destroyers. They need to be quick, though. So I'd rather they were tier 2 destroyers. Or how are you as an early cruiser? He's only 28. I want to keep it above 30 knots, ideally. The strike force doesn't have to be that fast. So, yeah. Let's take... Let's take a number of these destroyers out of the strike force. And push them into the the prime scouting force. Yeah, that seems good. Thank you. All right, so they're going to be the first scout force. Okay, you are you are the cream <laughs> cream spotters. Okay, they're going to be operating in the South China Sea, finding people, and then these ones. Basically, we'll have them operate, like, here and here, I guess. Just as early warning systems, almost. And you are to engage at... Yeah, engage at medium risk. And then we'll have the... The main battle group will come in and engage... Or maybe even almost at high risk. But I don't know about that. Maybe not. And I think I do want... Automatic split off for pretty much everyone. If you get damaged, get out of there. We're not taking losses for this. Everyone, everyone automatic split off. And the automatic reinforcement just doesn't work, so that's fine. And you guys, yeah, all automatically split off. You're just the, uh, the reserve. Right, here's another, I mean, yeah. And so from here, I feel like having my battle line being huge in my main army right and uh, my main fleet right now seems advisable but we do need to have a second one so we'll probably merge these two strike forces and then uh yeah like how do i it's short why is there no so there must be a select all button surely one would really think there'd be a select all button somewhere here i don't know we'll see we'll see um so this is just outdated ships which I guess I should, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I will divide up into some scouting groups. And then basically, um, right, and this 36 carrier needs, needs to be put to work. Because this is one of the, uh, yeah, 60 deck ones. So he should, he should be, she should definitely be flying with the beta strike force. This one... Can almost just be split in half to form two relatively good screening forces. So I think I'll do that. They're relatively heavy on the cruisers, but that's okay. Ah, oh, wrong icon. Ah, oh, but I should leave. I should leave the reserve with something, um, so that it just still exists. So that ships being deployed are still have somewhere to be deployed to. Okay, now each of these are going to be scout forces. Okay, and they're just outdated, old outdated scout forces that need somewhere to go, basically. 
Um, and we'll see, these guys are probably really going to be, op realistically going to be operating in the Pacific. Mostly, out, way out in the Pacific. So maybe we should have another army for that. Another navy even. Like the Pacific Defense Fleet. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do this in order to... Yeah, you know what? Let's have a... Uh... Let's have a separate fleet. Sorry, a separate theater for... Uh... So this is main fleets. And this is kind of off, you know, misc fleets. So the uh, the subs and that stuff can go in the misc fleets section. Okay, now you are the reserve fleet, so you can just go and sit there and get your default icon back. Oh, excuse me, default icon back. Good, and you are going to be. This is the Pacific fleet. Pacific. I think we established that's how it's spelled, right? <laughs> yeah, good. This is the Pacific Fleet. So, you're going to want all these outdated scout groups are going to be operating in the Pacific Fleet. This is just a secondary... The Beta Strike Force, I might even put it under the Main Fleet one. Well, no. And they still need Sun Scouts, but that's fine. Uh, but yeah, you guys go under here. Now, you... We'll need to conform to the right color. Cool. Um, good. So the Pacific fleets are going to be, they've got four right now. I think I'll want to shrink them there naturally. So that we can uh, operate in more sea zones. Uh, yeah, a couple more of those. I mean, I'm just I'm just picking the number 10 out of thin air basically as a good number good size for these strike forces I really have no idea what actually would be the best size um, but we'll see so you need someone that's good at spotting preferably spotting chance yeah he seems good mm. not happy about the low naval AA I do like the speed though maybe you'd be a better placed guy we can give him, uh, yeah, cons that's actually perfect. Him with Concealment Expert and Retreat Chance makes him perfect to be our current commander of the Pacific Fleet because I'm not intending it to fight anyone. I'm purely intending it to patrol all of these outside regions where we just don't want uh, enemy ships causing trouble. We're currently importing... From Russia, from Eastern Siberia port, apparently, for some reason. Um, that seems very dumb. The other thing we need to do now, now we're actually getting ready, is... Uh, we're going to ban lots of these areas. I don't want to see any of my shipping going through any of this space. Good. Because I just don't want our... Uh, Supply lines getting mucked up by going the wrong way. We could also force our supply lines to go round Australia while we took control of Malacca, but I think for now that's okay. And if we wait a day for it to rejig, yeah. So now our imports from Russia should be uh, should be more sensible. Not going to go up through the Bering Sea because that's obviously going to leave them very open to being uh, raided by the U.S. and things once that gets started. Uh, what else are we doing here? Right, we're supplying the the troops there. Uh, ideally, what, what, why are we doing? What is this? What is this line of shipping? We're importing rubber from France, right? Probably shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Let's import from Siam instead. That seems like a far more sensible locale. Um, where else? No one else really a good option. So I guess we'll just import from uh, Dutch East Indies for now. Obviously, they're going to be under our thumb soon enough, so we won't have to import from them at all. Yeah, and what's this last one? I mean, what, what is this line? Excuse me, hello? What's that? It's rubber from Brazil. Right. Uh, yeah, let's, let's cease that. I don't want that to be active when the war starts because... Uh, 
I'll forget about it and then just have it being raided the whole time. Good. So we have no really long range supply lines to worry about. This one will end as soon as the war's declared when we bring back the volunteers we sent to Iran. Excellent. Okay, so the Pacific Fleet. One, two, three, four zones it's exploring right now. Which I guess means I could hold two task forces in reserve. You should all automatically split off. Only, ex only engage at low risk. I suppose I could have it patrol a bit of the Solomon Sea as well. And the Celeb Sea as well. Sure. Now we've got, you know, the right number of zones. And so now one of these will go and operate in each zone. Good. So I'll, I'll let them get to their zones and then I'll set them doing some naval exercises. And they can, uh, they can report back to the zones as needed. Okay, now you guys... And then they'll stay in the zones when they're doing their exercises, is what I mean to say. Seems so the last one is, uh, is here, now moving in here. Good. We have no capital ships in these ones. So now all of you guys can do some naval exercises for a bit more. Oh, it changed where they were doing them for some reason. Don't know why it did that, but we'll see. And you can all base out of uh, Chogoku. Ch Chogoku? I don't know. How do you say that? Chogoku. Because that's a nice big naval repair base. Now, uh... The Beta Strike Force and the secondary find... What was that? What was the S? What was the F? Scout Force S1? Second? I don't know. <laughs> we could just call this Spotting 1 or Spot 1. Seems fine. This is the Cream Spot. <laughs> and this is uh, Spot 2. Cool. Uh, so you are going to be operating in the South China Sea. You are the backup, basically. If these guys get engaged and destroyed while operating in the South China Sea, you swoop into action. You guys are going to be on invasion support in the South China Sea. Yes, but don't actually end your repair task. That's fine. Go ahead and repair now. Um, you two... They've got split off on, so I'm happy for them to start training. And in fact, actually, you should be uh, training, but with split off enabled, so the ones that need to repair can go and do so. Good. Now, do we want to change it up? So this is the force that's going to be supporting the invasion. And then this is the force that's going to be actually engaging enemy hostile ships in the region if such a battle starts. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to just peacefully support the invasion as it goes down without the second fleet actually needing to get involved. But if it does need to get involved, it will sally forth and attack them wherever they are, wherever they're trying to kill my convoys. So you uh, do this and then split off whichever needs to repair. Good. Unfortunately, I think I did just cancel the repairs, which may have killed all the progress we've made so far. No, no, because repair is just about going to the strength bar, so that can happen bit by bit. Good. Okay. Um, I think just good to let time go now. Slightly using fuel, but that's okay. We need the naval XP, as I keep saying. And you guys are just gonna just kind of convoy raid the whole region. Seems good to me. Okay. What is lacking? What is lacking is... Port defense from these guys, but again, the uh, supply deficit is only 140 days now, so it's not too bad. I'm a bit concerned that Soviets still feel the need to put so many men on my border, even though we have a non-aggression pact. Probably because they, uh, I don't know, maybe Germany. Why are you guys so keen on, oh, they're likely to, oh yeah, right, you're going fascist, aren't you? Um, we could probably invite them to faction at some point. <laughs> I don't they really want to be part of the Axis, apparently. Hungary would accept a non-aggression pact. <laughs> Still fighting well down here in Iran. Good. Holding off the Brits. Any casualties we can cause the Brits to take is, uh, you know, men that we won't have to face later on. And there's a lot of divisions here. Looks like the uh, the battle for India may be more intense than I had suspected. That's okay. We are uh, we're a little way away still. Oh, and they're finally beginning to put some men in uh, Vietnam, it looks like. Who's not exercising? You... You can be exercising. Good. Okay. What else do we need? We could have a better air base here. 
but I think we're going to be limited more by number of planes than number of air bases. So that's probably okay. We've got, yeah, maybe maybe don't need those there. Um, let's put them. The Philippines Sea, maybe. Their range just isn't very good, though. So, actually, let's have these guys up here in case there's enemy sh enemy problems attacking our shipping lines up here. Yeah, that seems smart. And the fighters are just here, basically, to have them be somewhere. We have some more we could actually deploy, which we might as well, really. No point overstacking air bases just for good habit, though. Let's move some of them out to Taiwan. Actually, let's not have them on Taiwan, because Taiwan is... Um, would require some supply to fly over, uh, to, to be shipped there. Let's do it up here. I could also ban the East China Sea. No, that doesn't make sense. I was thinking to force the supply to go in here and round and then back out here again. But we'd have to also ban these areas, which would prevent supply getting to these bases. So that's not workable, really. With our really high war support, as soon as we get that spiritual mobilization completed, we should see a decent amount of manpower coming back into the pool. Low supplies in Iran. Oh, God. The French landed in the freaking port. That's not good. Um, all right. We are not dying for the Iranians today. Let's fall back with haste. Just get out of there. If we have bad supply, I'm not prepared to do a, a kind of last stand situation. So we'll fall straight back up here and hopefully we can hold out using this victory point to provide a little bit of supply. Something else we could maybe be doing is building some um, transport planes so we can airdrop in supply. In Not here, just in general. But it's they're so expensive, transport planes. The, the amount of IC we'd have to invest just doesn't seem worth it to me. Yeah, and Iran's about to fall. Tehran's already gone. That long daily tick makes me think maybe... No. Oh, Italy joined the Pact of Rome, though. Very interesting. Okay, who's the leader of the Pact of Rome? Can I see that? Well, there'll be a major, so we can probably infer that, yeah, it's Hungary. I'd like a non-aggression pact with Italy. Oh, they're no longer willing to uh, sign a non-aggression pact with me, though. Reaffirming territorial claims. Oh, dear. So they're going to start going to war with Czechoslovakia and Transylvania and uh, Romania soon. Which will cause some pretty big conflicts, looks like. What's Germany going to do next? Yeah, these guys are beginning to suffer from lack of supply, but... I want to see what Germany's doing next. Oh, fate of Czechoslovakia. Well, that shouldn't cause an outbreak of war, but it might cause war between Germany and the Pact of Rome, which would be interesting. Um, it's not time for that yet. We've got a few more focus. Let's do Torpedo Cruiser. Wow, I really want the first air fleet. I've got to know what a Torpedo Cruiser is. So let's try that. We could start working on uh, improved heavy batteries. But if I don't have a better hull to put them in, I don't want to start building uh, battleship hulls from 1936 using 1940 batteries. That just doesn't seem sensible. So instead, let's work on the short-term health of our Navy. Let's get some damage control research done. Get firefighting drills done. Yeah, that seems good. Okay. Uh, unfilled import requests. What's not what's not being got? Steel from Manchuko. Outrageous. Fortunately, I don't think we needed it. All right. We'll call it apart there in the next episode. We're getting very, very close now. <laughs> but uh, probably... Oh, they're doing collaboration with the Japanese. Nice. Does that actually give me any bonuses? Do I get an event? Doesn't look like it. Do I get any bonuses from you doing this stuff? Activates mission. Build a carrier. <laughs> cool. Well, obviously, I'd like it if they had a... Uh, China demands subjugation. I don't think they're going to be able to do that. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. In the next one, we're getting very, very close now. We'll finally learn what torpedo cruisers are. The navies are organized. Oof, it's getting, it's getting exciting. Things are going to heat up very soon, I swear. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye.